Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. So I've recently done the Buyer's Guys reviews for now all of the modules in DCS World except for the Warbirds. The Warbirds I'm going to do a little differently. I'm going to do all six Warbirds that are available August 2019 in one video. The reason I'm going to do that is because to pick between these Warbirds in terms of quality of module, so I mean visuals, sound, interactivity, difficulty and flight model quality, the things that I've been rating these aircraft so far, it's just impossible to pick between them. They're all about as good quality as each other. So we are going to review them in terms of those factors, but instead we're going to have a single category rating for all of these aircraft together. So Warbirds will just be, there'll be one visual effect rating for Warbirds, one sound effect rating for Warbirds, one interactivity rating for Warbirds, like I said, because they're all so similar to each other. And if you want to compare the quality of these Warbirds compared to all of the other singular modules in DCS, please look at the uh, record sheet in the video description of this video where you can compare it against the other singular modules and what I've rated it and what the other GR members have rated it. But the main thing we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to assume that you've decided already that you're going to buy a Warbird and not one of the other non-Warbird modules. And so we're going to look at the differences between the six Warbirds in terms of, in terms of capability. We're also going to have a flight in each of them just to give you an idea of roughly how one feels compared to the other. And along the way we can have a good look at the graphics and the sound and the interactivity as we see fit. So let's start with capability. So I've put together this fact sheet for the Warbirds that we have. We have the Spitfire Low Altitude Low Flying Mark 9. We have the P-51D Mustang, the Focke-Wulf 190 D-9 Dora, the Focke-Wulf 190A8, and the BF-109 K-4 Kurfürst, and the Polokarvov I-16. Now the first thing to note is that these are not actually contemporary to each other. They were produced at different times during the war and we've got to remember at the ferocious progress that was being made at the time so if we've got a polycarp of 516 that was I found it very hard to find out exactly when our model was made but roughly in the mid 30s 1935 and then if we look up here at a Dora that was introduced in September 1944 it's nearly 10 years between them and in those times 10 years was a lifetime in terms of military aviation progress but that's just what we've got so we just have to accept it so let's just go through it in a logical format. The Spitfire Low Flying Mark 9 introduced June 1942 armament, four times Colt Browning 7.7 .7 as a 303, uh, 303 machine guns, and two times the Spano Mark II 20mm cannons. It can also carry three times 250 pound bombs. The engine produces 1705 horsepower on wartime emergency power. Its dimensions are as shown there, awful big wingspan. Now bear in mind that with the module you do get the full wing version like you've got here and a clipped wing version. The clipped wing takes two feet off either wing I believe it is. It gives you a superior roll rate and superior speed but slightly higher wing loading. The wing loading on this aircraft is excellent at only 100 kilos per meter squared and this is the reason why this aircraft is so good at turning compared with the other aircraft here. I'll show you when we do some flying laser but in World War II obviously this thing here could easily outturn its contemporary, which was, it was not the Kerverse here, but it was an earlier version, obviously, of the BF-109. Because the BF-109's higher wing loading it simply couldn't turn with the Spitfire in terms of tightness or sustained turn rate. Uh, its max speed is a relatively miserable 408 miles per hour at 25,000 feet. So obviously, if you're going to have a very low wing loading, you're going to be fairly draggy and you're not going to be particularly fast. It was always the Achilles heel of the Spitfire compared to its German contemporaries. Rate of climb, 4,100 feet per minute. Very good. Ceiling of 43,000 feet, which is the best here. So exceptional. Again, presumably um, a mix of its engine optimization and its uh, low wing loading. Its weight was 5,600 pounds. So it was, I think, the lightest here. Apart from the polycarbonate, it's the lightest here. And it could fly a maximum ferry of 698 kilometers and that is fairly low so in DCS missions with the Spitfire we do well almost always run out of fuel even if we're going not very far but the fact is we don't cruise slowly we cruise fast this is how we fly so fuel is a problem with the Spitfire you can take a belly fuel tank in DCS but I believe this 700 kilometers includes the fuel tank and what we've got here in red, uh, these red figures here, I've just shown them, shown my workings out if you're interested in. I thought you might like to see a score, a final score for each bird here with uh, taking into 
account the what I call the critical figures and you can change it and personalize it as you see fit what I've done is I've taken a speed in miles per hour here the climb rate here the ceiling here the uh, ferry distance here and the armament here, I've turned them into ratios here out of one, one being the highest scoring aircraft of that particular attribute, added up those ratios and given a final score. So you can see here the Spitfire in terms of armament, 70.8 millimeters in total, which gives us a ratio of 0.67. Altitude, climb rate, speed and ferry distance, add those up and you get 3.69. If you want, I've done a ratio for wing loading here as well. The lower the wing loading, the better the turn's going to be pretty much. So you can add that one to that if you like. And you can personalise this score so you can take out any of the attributes that you don't like. So if you don't care about ferry range, for instance, you can get rid of that. If you do care about wing loading, you can add that and so on. Next, we have the P-51D Mustang, generally accepted as the best all-round fighter in World War II by historians. Uh, we're June 1944. Armum, six times Mike II half inch machine guns that's a pretty good firepower can also carry 10 times 127 mil t64 high velocity rockets um i can also carry two times what 500 pound bombs the wep horsepower is almost the same as the spitfires was exactly two years earlier which i find interesting if anyone knows why that is please let me know but it's what it says in the uh, dcs facts and figures Length and wingspan, note the extremely long wingspan of the wings. Wing loading, a lot higher at 159, so obviously it can't turn like the Spitfire. And we've got the famous laminar flow wing on this aircraft. Also, we have the max speed at 437 miles per hour, 25,000 feet. So it's significantly faster than the Spitfire, even with the same power. Rate of climb, much less due to presumably wing loading. And weight, uh, 3,200 feet per minute. Uh, so a ceiling just under 42,000 feet, a weight of 76,000 pounds, so it must be nearly the heaviest. And the thing that really makes the Mustang is the nearly 3,000 kilometer range with drop tanks. Nothing else could come close to it in World War II in terms of fighters. And so if we run the math again, uh, we miss off the wing loading, which I haven't included in this one, we get a 4.33, which makes it easily overall the best fighter, including ferry range, in this little, um, uh, sum in this little summary that I've done here. However, note that in DCS world, it's unlikely that you're ever going to need a 3,000 kilometer uh, ferry range. So you may want to factor that out. That's up to you. Note the firepower at a total of 76.2 millimeters. Next, we have the focke 190 D9 Dora, also debatably the best uh, fighter of World War II, depending on who you are. There's numerous versions of the, uh, of the focke 190 in the war. September 1944, armament two times 13 mil machine gun. I think they're in the kind of engine cowling. And two times MG-151 20mm cannons in the wings. Also, we can have 26 anti-air rockets. These are for shooting down bombers, but we actually find them perfectly uh, acceptable for shooting light armor ground targets. Or the two times Werfer Kalnada, the, the massive 8-inch anti-air rockets. You can carry two of them. We've still never used them in a mission, but must be useful. We've got four times 50 kilo bombs we carry, or uh, one times 500 kilo bomb, and you can have bombs and uh, the rockets at the same time. A power, a massive 2,071 from the V12 Jumo. Uh, note that this is with MW50 supplement, uh, so it is a certain of a limited time, but it's about 20 minutes. It's more than they're ever really going to need. It just shows how uh, forced induction with methanol and water really kicked the arse of the... Uh, the, uh, the the Merlins um, in the other aircraft. Length, uh, wing loading, massive wing loading, nearly double that of the Spitfire due to its relatively smaller wing and its much heavier weight. And this will be massively noticeable when we're in the air later on. It can't turn anywhere near uh, like the Spitfire can. It simply is not a dogfighter, the Dora. Uh, it's, it's a boom and zoom and for shooting down bombers. Max speed, a very impressive 440 miles per hour, 37,000 feet. Um, Radial climbs, 3,300, so pretty much the same as the P-51. Ceiling just under 40K. And a heavyweight of 7,697,000 uh, pounds. It's the heaviest one here. And you can feel it when you're driving it. Relatively light armament of combined 66 mil. 835 kilometers is okay. And if we add all that up, excluding the wing loading, we have a 3.51 for that aircraft. Next is the Fokker Wolf, another version. This one is the A8. Notice that this was a Jumo V12, and this is a, oh god, is it a BMW? Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's the BMW um, the radial engine. 
So, this is heavily, most heavily armed in terms of gun, in terms of air to air weapons in DCS, uh, DCS for a war bow. We've got two, the two times counting mounted 13mm machine guns and four times 20mm cannons in a wing. Really impressive firepower. Gives us a total of 106 millimeters of firepower. And it's got the same rockets and bombs, I believe, as the door. I stand to be corrected there, but I'm pretty sure it has. Uh, we don't have methanol injection on this, so our horsepower is a lot less, at just under 1,700 horsepower. However, however, that's pretty good for 1941. Look at the difference. That's three years. In three years, a lot was changed, so it's really holding its own. I guess it's more contemporary with the uh, Spitfire. In fact, it was about a year before the Spitfire, from what I remember from reading my book, and still... The Spitfire only just outclassed it a year later. So this was a really impressive bird. It really made a difference. Dimensions, wing loading, a lot higher than the Spit, 1.75. It's heavy and the wings just aren't that big. Uh, we've, in terms of area, maximum speed, exactly the same as the Spitfire, slightly lowered down. So it's pretty slow for a warbird, top of the range warbird. Rate of climb, pretty terrible to be honest. Um, 2950 feet per minute. Again, big, heavy, small wings and not a vast amount of power means your climb rate is always going to be pretty low. Ceiling, uh, just over 37,000, so it's the lowest ceiling so far for the same exactly the same reasons. The weight, just over 7,000 pounds, so she's a big heavy chunker, and 800 kilometers of range. If we do our same math with red units here, with uh, the uh, color of the guns really helps here and gives us a 3.69, exactly the same as the Spitfire. Next is the Curverse. This is, this is the one we consider, consider the best all-rounder. Uh, generally, this will win in a fight in DCS. BF109K4 Curverse, October. So this is the latest, September, October. Yes, this is the latest plane we've got, 1944, the most advanced. We've got two times 30 mils and one times 30 mil cannon coming through the, uh, the spinner there. So it's in the V of the engine. Uh, so it's really interesting. That's mainly for bombers, but uh, if you're going to fight against fighters, you're usually going to use your high-velocity machine guns there. Uh, we've got two bombs we can carry, 1,762 Imperial horsepower, that is with uh, NW50 I believe, so that's WEP as well, 171 uh, kilos per meter squared of wing loading, which is a lot, really high max speed, i um, been reading about this aircraft at the moment and the improvements they made on every version, there was a lot of versions of this aircraft, and each one they found a different way of optimizing airspeed, they can gain one mile an hour from changing this aerial, one mile an hour from taking off the uh, stabilizer strut, one mile an hour from changing the radiator position, and so on, until they got to the K4, and we got it up to, whoops, got it up to 440 miles per hour, 444 miles per hour at an unknown altitude, it doesn't say anywhere. The rate of climb of this aircraft is massive, 4.8 thousand feet per minute. I can't work out why that is, because the wing loading's high, the power's not too high, it's relatively, it's in the middle in terms of weight, I guess you'd say. I think it made it something to do with the engine that a lot of these guys have engine restrictions in terms of climbing you need to climb so high before your engine problems and i think this had less restrictions but i stand to be corrected i don't really know just under forty thousand feet uh, six thousand one hundred and sixty pounds these are all empty weights by the way and 850 kilometers add all that stuff up together excluding the wing loading we get 3.76 which is the second highest just behind the high ferry range p51 next is a little polycarb of i-16 lovely little plane to fly so she's a real beauty obviously you've got to understand she's a pre-world war ii fighter and it's in terms of performance it's terrible against these guys here but it's still for the day it's actually really impressive uh, armament four times 7.62 machine guns which is pretty terrible but again pretty normal for the day i guess you'd say power 1100 horsepower whip uh, it's a whopping great radial in the thing uh, it's only 20 feet long so all kinds of your stability problems wing loading even superior less wing loading than the spitfire so it really can turn quite well speed 287 miserable uh, and because of that it makes it completely useless in dcs sadly it's great i mean you can't even ferry with these guys these guys ferry are faster than 287 miles per hour so it we love it, we love it, but it's at least for our missions where we're you know involved with these guys, it's simply no use. So it's it's a shame, but that's how it is. Rate of climb terrible, two point nine thousand feet per minute, or not particularly good. Again, just hasn't got power um, in this case. Ceiling thirty one thousand feet, pretty terrible. And well, compared to these, is what I'm saying. Not you know, it was actually good in his day, but uh, weight uh, three just over three thousand pounds uh, it's firepower combined firepower is only 30 mil i keep doing that my apologies uh, 440 kilometers and that is a real big one we can't even every time we try and use this in a gym room reaper submission we just run out of fuel it's just got no gas and a total accumulated score excluding wing loading 2.43 
So those are the facts and figures. I drive all of these. Well, I drive some of them more than others, but between our group, as I'm sure you've seen, we drive all of these and we've got a really good feel. We've had hundreds of dogfights. We've got a really good feel for what's, what's good and what's bad. Well, to be honest, they're all good, but they're all good at different things, exactly as they were in real life. The Spitfire is relatively slow by these standards. It's positively slow, but it's the best turner here. It can just sustain a beautiful turn. So if it gets attacked by any of these guys here, it can just go into a right turn. I can't remember which is which way is the spinner, but I think it's a right turn. And none of nothing here can keep up. Um, they'll either fall behind in speed, or the others will fall behind in turn rate and give up. And that's exactly as it was in World War II over the Channel in a Battle of Britain. If a Spitfire ever got in trouble, one of these on its tail, it'd just go into a right-hand turn, pull, and this guy would have to give up. So in terms of defensive, it's really good for that for that idea obviously you have to be able to um, uh, know that hostile is getting onto your six and be able to re react in time in terms of being offensive it's not too good you really gotta hope that your guy doesn't your opponent doesn't use his speed because all of these guys here are, are fast oh sorry apart from this guy here in fact, this one is actually a little faster, but these guys here that you're going to meet are a lot faster than you, so you can't do a sustained fight in terms of speed, but you can outturn all of them. Also, we've got a few foibles. She won't climb. Uh, most of these guys here will go happily go straight up. For some reason, if the Spitfire tries to go straight up after them, the engine blows up. Uh, I think it's an oil starvation problem. I um, stand to be corrected, but you just can't go up. If one of these guys goes up, you can't go up after it. You just can't do it. You have to go up in a slow spiral. As well as that, the wings love to snap off in a Spitfire. If one of any of these guys here dives down for speed, you've got to be really careful doing it in a spit. The wings will just snap. If you get up to max speed, the wings will just snap right off on you, as I'm sure you know if you've got a Spitfire. So it's another problem. You can't dive down after these guys very well, and you can't climb up after them. But you can descend, defend yourself beautifully. This here is a pretty good all-rounder. It only won because obviously it's stupidly big ferry range compared to everything else. In terms of speed, it's not quite as fast as the Germans. It's almost there. But in real dogfights, the, that guy here and this guy here always catches the uh, P-51, even negating fuel rates and stuff like that. In terms of turn, the, uh, the guys tell me, I'm not a big P-51 flyer, the guys tell me it's a little bit better than him and him or and him as well. But again, nothing compared to a Spitfire. Climb and dive are roughly comparable with the two Germans, or the three Germans, from as I understand it. Next is the Dora, and this is a pure boomer zoom. This has got such an awful wing load, it simply can't dogfight. If you got into a kind of a static dogfight where planes are spinning around each other, this is absolutely no use at all. This is a straight line fighter. This goes in a straight line, shoots its guns, and then zooms out. And a lot of the actual World War II fights were much more like that than the kind of dogfights that we do in DCS, where we're constantly turning around each other. That's fun. In, in, in the real world, they didn't really do that much. In, in real world, it was go up high, boom in, fire your guns as quick as you can, zoom out. That's, you know, if you, if you can't press the respawn button when you die and you actually have a real life, that's the kind of thing you do. And this is why this aircraft was so good at it, because nothing could catch it. In a dive, it's, well, it's comparable with the Kerr first, but it is excellent. And again, if you're chasing one of these in a spit and he's got a tiny bit of range on you and he just pegs it and puts it in a dive, the spit just falls back after a few seconds and there's nothing you can do to get back with him. So real different doctrines here. Turn fighter, boom and zoom. And if you try and do that as a turn fighter, it won't work. You'll just stall and you'll lose and be shot down immediately. If you try and do that as a boom and zoom, it won't work and you'll get shot down immediately. Then we've got the A8. The A8, I guess you'd describe as a toned down version of this. The problem with the A8 is it's got all of the worst features of this here, but it doesn't have the best features. And we can excuse it because it's a 1941, uh, June 1941 fighter at the end of the day. So it's got the speed of the Spitfire, but the crappy climb rate of this, or even worse. The wing loading is pretty high, so it can't really dogfight. If you try dogfighting in it with against one of these, yeah, no chance. So, in terms of all these attributes, it's, it's not particularly really good at anything. But the one thing it does come through in is its firepower. If you just get, I mean, for taking down a bomber especially, 106 mil combined of, of firepower, you can do so much damage in just one squirt and then dive away. Whereas imagine something like the 109, if you're not even using your 30 mil cannon, you've got, what, 26 mil of firepower, which is pretty useless. So, I love the AA, it sounds great, it's a great model, but... We've never actually found it particularly useful yet. Next is the BF-109. In reality, this is the one we consider the best all-round fighter, i.e. for going up against, which well, to be honest, just about the best all-round for everything, except ground attack. Ground attack are these two here. 
and to an extent the P51. And what we've got here is just a beautifully optimized, throughout the years, a beautifully op optimized unit. The Spitfire did get to this level as well, obviously, but we don't have a later Spitfire. So we've got the speed, it's the fastest thing here at 444, and in DCS it's the same, it, it overtakes everything. The climb rate is just amazing. If it's so frustrating trying to follow one of these in a spit or anything, it will just go straight up and you'll never catch it. You're gone, nothing you can do. Its weight is relatively low and not as light as a spit, but it is pretty agile. It does have a lot higher wing loading, so it certainly can't turn with the Spitfire. But it outturns him, outturns him, and I'd say it's, it's... I don't really know, but I think it's about the same as the P-51 in terms of turn. And for how the guys use this, they use it as a bit of everything. It can do everything. It can dogfight perfectly well in a turn. It can do boomer zoom perfectly well because of its speed. It's got the big cannon. It can do ground attack. It's pretty nimble in the air. You know, it's pretty light. So all round, if you want to win all round, it's the 109 for sure. But who wants to be an all rounder? And then you've got the little Polycarvov. Can't really do anything, but it looks cute and it sounds good without a cockpit. <laughs> That's all I can give that. Okay, so I've explained the, the guys that we've got here in DCF. I've, I've explained all of the hard uh, facts um, and I've given you some anecdotal of evidence of where each should be used. So it's going to help you choose your warbird. All we've got to do now is go and have a little flight just to show you roughly how it feels. And I'll just describe how I'm feeling the plane as I go. Okay, welcome to the Spitfire Mark 9 cockpit. First thing is, I guess we just have a look around the vehicle, have a look at the graphics inside. That uh, mirror does work, by the way. I've just got it turned off because my computer just can't handle uh, mirrors. Beautiful wing. Pretty lovely looking cockpit, to be honest. I've sat in a real Spitfire before, and the one thing you don't get an appreciation for is how tight it is in a real cockpit. In here, it looks kind of spacious to me and kind of comfortable, but in real life, it is so friggin' small. Let me see if I can remember how to turn the lights on. Not very well. There you go. All the aircraft have got roughly the same kind of uh, uh, reflector gun sight. All the aircraft have got a pre-tuned radio set with around four channels. I think they're all four channels. Notice there's no kind of radio navigation in the Spitfire. It is purely compass. And the one thing about the compass in this is that it is right behind, just like the real Spit, behind uh, the, the, the yoke. So you just, behind the stick, so you just can't see it. In the real Spitfire, you can kind of lean over. And look at it like that and I guess you can kind of like this but it's, it's really awkward to do in terms of interactivity in the cockpit of these aircraft they're all pretty top-notch everything looks good feels good and just about everything is clickable or usable that uh, is relevant to DCS in any way saying that that knob there isn't and that stick there isn't I think that adjusts the seat Okay, for the sounds, we'll just listen as we go along. Now, I genuinely haven't flown a warbird for about a month, maybe over a month, so I'm going to be pretty terrible, but I think it's probably actually a good thing because I can really um, uh, show you if they are hard to take off. I'm about to show you, basically, because I may very well crash. I'm not going to set any rudder trim on any of them, so I can tell you what kind of feedback they give, just with neutral trim. And I'll just explain what I feel as I go. Let's get on with it then. So let's throttle up, see how she feels. She's immediately pulling to the left in terms of your... She's also rolling left, I can feel, so I'm going to, I'm going to uh, yaw right, and I'm going to roll right to counteract that. I'm going to take off. I'm going to nose forward as well, because I don't want to take off prematurely. About 100. Woohoo! Hello. I'm going to keep that nose forward. She wants to climb. There's so much lift, but I'm not going to let her. Uh, not too high. Sorry, I don't want to stall until we've got some speed. Very powerful. Accelerates pretty well. 140. It's miles an hour, sorry, isn't it? It's just it's flat out. Brown, beautiful. In terms of trim, we have elevator trim, we have rudder trim, we do not have aileron trim, and that's really annoying. That means to go straight, I've got to kind of um, keep, the, keep the joystick cocked. It's very frustrating. The aircraft's always trying to tilt over because of the, uh, the torque generated, generated by the big propeller. Feels very powerful, feels like it accelerates very high, very fast, which it does. Just doesn't have a particularly good top speed. Let me try and get my gun sight up. Test fire. There we go. 
So it's uh, four machine guns and uh, two cannon. And the lift that she's got is just amazing. I can just look. What am I doing? 160 knots, and I could just pull up. I don't want to go up too high because I'm going to break my engine, but no chance of a wing stalling. It's just so much lift, such low wing loading, and so much power here. Look what I'm doing. Finally, I finally stalled it. But um, that's just really good. In terms of recovery, it's pretty neutral, pretty easy to recover. No problems there. It's pretty light to the touch. It's very, um, very sensitive. So when you're trying to aim for a target, you can kind of bounce a little bit because of how sensitive she is compared to some of the other warbirds. In terms of roll, I've got the full elliptical wing version here, so roll is terrible. Look at that, that's about as good as we get. But that's just how it is with the Spitfire, you know? Pull too much out first, she'll just drop. Oh, down she goes. I pick up some speed. This is good fun. One really annoying thing about the Spitfire, no one's ever found a solution for it, is that the crosshair is so close to the um, top of the engine cowling there that you can't really lead hostiles because you can't see them below uh, the uh, you can't see them below the the crosshair and above the cowling. Presuming to be that's accurate to the real spit. Look how easily we can climb and just no chance of, almost no chance of stalling the thing. And this is why it's such a good dogfighter. Dogfighter, I mean, look at this turn rate we're about to do. Look at that. Compare that to a, an F-18 or an F-15 or something. Nothing would stand a chance. How small that turn radius is. Look at that. It's amazing. So you can see nothing, nothing can keep up with that. In DCS, it's absolutely fantastic, and we are yeah we're full fuel as well, so we're we're as yeah, we're you know we're super heavy. We can still turn like that. I uh, can't think what else to say. So she rolls pretty badly because of that's just how she's built. Um, she can pitch up pretty well. She can hand alpha, handle alpha pretty well, uh, bearing in mind that you know it is a warbird. But with her, her low wing loading, it's, uh, she is genuinely quite difficult to stall compared to just about all of the other warbirds, to be honest. Turn rate and turn radius, about as good as you can possibly get. Small movements, personally, this may just be the way I've got it set up. Small movements I find very difficult. I find when you're trying to lay down guns on a target, she'll jump about a lot because I find her very sensitive. Um, but you may be able to find another way around that, but that is a problem that I have. Trims, easy to use. Like I said, you don't get real trim, unfortunately. So uh, that is a bit frustrating, especially on ferries. Because of her high wing loading, sorry, low wing loading, she can go extremely slow. I can just fly along at 60 knots if I want. I suppose because we've got a lot of planes to get through, I should probably go in for a landing now. So where's my speed? Okay, whoa. So we're 100 knots now, look. Get down, flaps down. I'll talk about how she feels as we go. And I can tell you, I've done plenty of landings in her. She feels absolutely beautiful to land. And the reason is, it's just like a feather. The reason is that because she can fly so, she's so light. She's got such a low wing loading. She'll just fly in like a glider. I feel just like a glider. We can land at 50, 60 knots. Maybe not quite that low. We're fully fuel at the moment, so we're quite heavy. Um, but she feels absolutely gorgeous to land. One problem is the, um, the gear. They're very close to each other, so once you're down on the ground, the danger is not over. And over. It's easier to land than it is to taxi. It's very hard to taxi on the ground, so it's one thing to bear in mind. Uh, right, I've got to concentrate. 120, 110, right. Now, I don't want to make excuses, but I haven't done this in a while, and I'm not expecting the best. But look at that, 110 miles. I keep thinking they're knots, but they're miles per hour. That's knots, 98 knots, true speed. And not even thinking about dipping a wing, look. 95 knots, just want my trim out. 93 knots, and she's heavy, 90 knots. Got to concentrate for just a second. Nose up in the air for the three-pointer. Just glide out, let her, let her stall onto the runway. And that was landing at 64 knots I saw down there. That was lovely. Dab the brakes. That's not bad for the first time in a month. <laughs> hey, I hope the rest of that easy. Um, and she's gorgeous to land. Um, 
you will when you get the module you'll cock up every landing you do until you learn how to land it you do just land it like that like a glider at 60 knots and she uh, she's perfectly happy with it even the clip wind you can land about 65 knots she's perfectly happy with it just thinking what else you might want to see i guess some exterior sound so let's gonna have a look at that guess some pretty cool huh sounds great in these modules visuals great in these modules flight models beautiful interactivity great you must have a warbird or your life is not complete that reverb we got it all just right and a bit of throttle <laughs> oh there you go right gotta be careful with the old brakes that's it in summary very light, almost like flying a really powerful glider around. I absolutely love it. You know, this is not a particularly good plane to attack bombers. It's not a boom and zoom. This is a turn fighter, and that's what she wants to do. Okay, so let's go to the absolute opposite end of the spectrum now. Right, so we're in the heaviest plane now, almost twice the wing loading. So for a, uh, a square meter of wing, we're carrying twice as much weight. Completely different design ethos here. This is all about speed, coming in fast, attacking, and then getting out fast. Climb rate is very low because of, you know, the obvious physics. So I guess the first thing we want to do is look around the cockpit again. Just look, remember, remember where the Rio stat is. There it is. <laughs> cool lighting, huh? I don't, I'm not sure if we've got a floodlight or not, but I can't rem remember where it is. Um, so we've got the same type of sight here. We've got target wingspan in meters, and you can see the different, you know, Russian fighter, Spitfire, Mustang, Hurricane uh, in meters there, or um, uh, bombers meters there. Uh, this is a gyro uh, driven sight. We've got this guy here. We can turn the gyro on or off almost all of the time. I just prefer it off. I just prefer shooting from a neutralized bore sight, to be honest, but uh, it's up to you. We've got basic radio navigation here that can get you back to your base, uh, a radio direction finding. Uh, currently, it's broken in both Focke Wolf 190s and the BF 109. It's incredibly frustrating. How hard can it be to keep it working? Uh, at one point, the D9 did work um, about a year ago. Um, that's all I can say about that. Instrument layout is beautiful in this aircraft. So useful to use, so easy to use, you wouldn't believe, especially the engine instruments and stuff like that here and the NW50 pressure and whatnot. It's another thing to say with NW50 in this aircraft. So 2,100 horsepower nearly, NW50 on. Make sure that's the clicked. Yes, it is. So we've got MW50, 2,100 horsepower nearly. So I just need to settle down and show you the graphics now, don't I? One thing about uh, German fighters, one disadvantage they have is that the visibility is never, never as good as the English Spitfire. Lovely graphics in here. In terms of interaction, it's basically as good as um, any of the other warbirds it's very good in terms of taxiing this aircraft much easier than a Spitfire we've got a locking tailwheel back there so we pull back like that on the stick we actually lock the tailwheel and that means it no longer a caster tailwheel that gives us much better control for uh, general taxiing as well as takeoff and landing as long as you remember to do it I must remember to do it Okay, let's see if we can remember how to arm our guns. It's been a while. I think it's that dude there. Give it some throttle. Get on. Uh, rough ammo counters there. Uh, we're going to take this fighter off very differently. We're going to pull back on the stick to keep the tailwheel locked so that we don't cast her at the back. Uh, if you forget to do that, you're almost certainly going to crash unless you're really good with the rudder. And we're going to fly. Like, uh, we're going to drive like that till about 100 to 150 kilometers an hour here. Then we're going to release uh, the stick so that we turn into a caster rear. Uh, then we're going to nose down slightly to get the nose down. We're going to need a lot more speed to take this off than the Spitfire. She won't just suddenly take off on her own at about uh, 60 knots or whatever the Spitfire did. We'll have plenty of rudder authority by that point, so the, car the rear caster shouldn't be a problem. And then we're just going to... None of these aircraft you rotate, they're not like jets. You don't pull back on the stick to take off. If you do, it's ever so slightly. If you ever pull back on the stick, 
then uh, you'll just stall one of these aircraft. So it's going to be very different and very easy to stall uh, when we're taking off. When I took that Spitfire off, as soon as I got up, I could do just about whatever I wanted and it wouldn't stall. So much wing, so much power. With this, plenty of power, but not much wing and a lot of weight. Right, let's get on with it and I'll try and tell you what I can feel as we go. Sounds good, big Jumo V12. Got the methanol injector on. Watch the speedo. God, it sounds good. You see the PSI on the ATA there. Release the caster. Nose forward. Think about taking off. See hardly any rotation there. Well, gear up. Check the gear. Wraps up. And we don't want to do any manoeuvring until we've got the speed because she will not like to manoeuvre. Okay, we're 170 knots now. Sorry about the noise, but it's a loud, powerful aircraft. So, we're going to try and do what we did with the Spitfire, and look at that. She's struggling already, really struggling. Oh, just brute power's getting around there. You can feel, you can feel the wings stalling. Stalled. Just recover. We're okay. It feels a lot more... It feels a lot more dangerous than the Spit. And that's because we've got double the wing loading. We've got to be much more careful and sensible about what, about what we do. It's like flare, flare flying a MiG-21 as compared to an F-5 or something. So we're going to keep our speed nice and high, nice big arcs. In terms of turn rate, to be honest, we're going to be pretty crap. Let's see what we can get. You can, you can see a bitey there. You can see the Alpha getting too high. You can see it's starting to shake. No, just can't do it. Try again. That's about the best we can get. Much slower than the Spitfire. Too much? Ah, she's still. See what I mean? So, absolutely no chance in a turn fight with a Spit. But what she can do is this lots and lots of speed. Bit fast, simply couldn't keep up with this. There's nothing it could do to keep up. The reflector sight's a bit weird. You have to move your head kind of like there. So you need to track IR or whatever you're going to use. Get some. Have some of that. When we're doing maneuvers like this, careful not to raise the alpha too much. She will still, even if we're going fairly fast, very easy to over alpha. So you have to be. A lot more mature pilot. You can't boost flight like a Spitfire. You can't fly it like a glider. So you've got to be careful. So you see, I've uh, stalled the wing. So you have to be a lot more careful, a lot more gentle with her. If you are, then she'll reward you with uh, with her speed. In terms of how the flight model feels. As long as you don't go past her limit, I mean, first of all, all of the flight models for the uh, Warbirds feel excellent. I've got no complaints with any of them at all. But this is much more stable than the Spitfire. The Spitfire, although excellent, is very finicky. Remember I explained, uh, um, yeah, explained it's kind of finicky? Uh, move the stick round and it will bounce about everywhere, hard to aim. This is the opposite. This is almost like a, an F-15. It almost feels like it's got a bit of fly-by-wire control. It's very smooth. Everything's very smooth. Maybe it's got some dampeners in. Maybe it's just the design. But it's not as frantic like the Spitfire. Very easy to get on someone's six and aim at them. Sit here and just take shots. Very difficult to do with a Spitfire. So much more stable. In terms of ground attack, she is excellent. Probably the best plane. Maybe you might say the P-51, but I think this is the best uh, ground attack due to the power that we can get into a climb. The, uh, the speeds that we can get up for the dive bomb and the weapons that we can carry and most importantly the smoothness of this operation how easily I can aim so let me um, come around on this hangar here I have to be careful not to pull too tight so it feels very different to a Spitfire very mature compared to a Spit I'm going to be patient I'm not going to rush it like I would with a Spit Running on the target now, and it's just so composed. It feels so composed. They're all the time in the world now, because of how uh, how stable it is, and how non-jittery, and peck away at some things. Oh, 
Oh, I just got some rudder oscillation there. That's why I was going uh, wobbling left and right. Um, what next? Sounds gorgeous. Oh, in terms of roll, we haven't looked at roll. Roll is really, it's pretty good. Look at that. The wingspan, I believe, is shorter than the um, Spitfire. Look at that roll authority compared to the Spit. That's one good thing when you're defending from a Spit, you can change direction much quicker than the Spit can because of your roll in just about any of the other aircraft, to be honest. In terms of trim, uh, we have elevator, we have... Let me just find out. Oh, sorry, no, we've only got elevator trim. We don't have rudder or aileron. I never actually knew that. But the thing is, the thing is, the reason I never knew that is because it's so stable, it doesn't need trimming. A Spitfire's got to be trimmed constantly, all the time. This, honestly, feels like feels like a really stable jet. I just don't need to... Look how, look how level I can keep it. Almost no input. Let me just um, show you. Look where the stick is. Almost central to keep it flying centre. If that was a Spitfire, I would have to hold it like that. Makes a huge difference. So much more pleasurable to fly from that because it's so much less work, so much less frantic. So, um, yeah, so we talked about the trim, we talked about the roll, we talked about the turn, we talked about the climb. Uh, can't think. Oh, yeah, uh, another thing. A Spitfire, it's pretty easy to smash your engine up. You go up too high, all sorts of things, you can break your engine. With this, it's a fully automated, very modern, fully automated engine management system. And everything is looked after for you. As far as I know, it's impossible to blow your engine up. Um, the cow even the cowling, the cooling cowling, I think, is done automatically. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've never managed to blow an engine up in one of these. So that's one thing to bear in mind. Much, much less to think about than in a uh, P-51 or a Spitfire. Right, we've got to think about landing now. Now, she is big, she's heavy, and she's small wings, so she won't slow down like a Spit. So we may have to do a bit of slip here. I'm going to rudder. Oh, I haven't done this for a while. Rudder and roll. Look at that speed bleed off with the slip angle. Landing. Uh, oh, God, it's been a while since I did this. I think about 250 clicks over the threshold. I'm going to just do it more, more, more by feel than anything, to be honest. Um, the way, and we're going to land with full back stick because, remember, we need our uh, caster to go to a... Um, well, the way I like to do it is to have... The, uh, the wheel locked as soon as we land, otherwise it can be a little bit difficult to control. Um, otherwise, flaps would help, wouldn't they? No, nope, I've got to remember how to do it. Ah, oh, sugar. Sorry, I can't remember how to do them. Come on, give me some bloody flaps. What's our speed? Speed's too high. Gear out. I, I need to work on my German, obviously. There we go. Flaps down and gear down. Right, let's go around again. So, she's pretty smooth, but obviously we can't go slow like we did in the spit. We've got to land pretty fast, almost like a jet. Just going to speed that up. You have to sit and watch. Okay, going to come in quite steep here. Keep on plenty of power. Be careful of my alpha. Okay, down we go. And I'm going to land it like I do the spit, with feel, rather than numbers. I just do it by feel. You can feel when she's happy, you can feel when she's unhappy, you can feel when she's losing lift. A little bit fast, 165 knots. That's a little bit fast, trim up. What I'm going to do essentially, like the spit, hover her above the runway. And when she's ready, she's going to stall on her own. Cut the throttle not too high because you don't want much of a sink rate and get ready to lock that rear wheel when she touches touch a little bit of a bounce that's okay snap back lock that rear wheel and uh, lovely not the best landing in the world but i'm not very good right so we'll come to a stop now and we will uh, i guess do some sound effects i think i may have used all of my 20 mil or i'm just not using them properly. Oh no, look at that. That's 20 mil and 13 mil. Get some. They all shoot through, through the propeller, look. Get some. Sounds beautiful. 
Let's uh, skip it the beans. 2,100 horsepower. Much more stable on the ground than the Spitfire. Again, she's a lot heavier, as she should be. Okay, let's jump in her sister, the A8. Okay, we're in the A8 now. Let me get the rear stat. Hmm, not working for some reason. Never mind. Uh, so she's laid out very similarly. You've got the, these, you know, these gauges down here. We're missing the uh, MW50, obviously. We've got the same gauges down here. So she is very similar in layout. We've got the radio down there. We've got the fuses and whatnot down there. In terms of uh, uh, cockpit quality, just the same as the others. Just very good, to be honest. Uh, I know it doesn't look. It looks a bit dark without the lighting on, but I can't actually remember how to put the lighting on. We're not going to waste time doing that. So we'll just scan over the cockpit a little, so you can get a good look at her. Again, it's all pretty top quality, to be honest. It's got an earlier gun sight. It's still got the um, direction finding, interestingly. There's a lot of hidden gauges under there. You have to kind of put your seat down or put your view position down to go and find them. It's lighting, isn't it? I don't know why that's not working. Okay, so for this plane, she flies very much like a Dora, to be honest. Uh, the, the bad thing about this plane is that, in terms of performance, that she's kind of got all the worst parts of the Dora, but doesn't have the good part, doesn't have the speed. So um, <laughs> so you'll stall a wing really easily, but you won't be able to outrun a Spitfire. Um, so it is a little bit problematic. She does make up for it with a gunfire, though. She's got 420 mils and 213 mils, I think. So it's really damaging if you get a strafe on someone. Safety, safety, yeah. Let's pull her up. That is the machine guns. That is the four cannons. Get some. Beautiful sounds. All of these warbirds, just excellent sounds. Brilliant graphics. So in terms of the takeoff, it's going to be pretty much the same as the Dora. We're going to backstick until 100 to 150, depending how confident I am. Then I'm going to neutralize stick, in fact, slightly stick forward to get the nose pointed down. And she's going to take off. She's going to tell me when she wants to take off. I'm not going to do it by numbers. And it would differ with um, when you have weapons on anyway, so the numbers just aren't that useful. Oh, and the other thing about this module, the sounds. Mmm, premium. Really good sounds, especially from exterior view. Right, you must remind me, remind me to do some exterior shots. Right, let's try and cock this up, shall we? So let's have a think. Um, okay, let's get going. Listen to that radio. She's pulling me left. She's rolling me left. I'm gonna go web. Neutralize the stick. Forward stick. Plenty of right rudder. Oh, look at that yaw I've managed to get. Oh, God. Don't worry. Put it under control. She feels like she wants to go. Help her up a little bit. And we're up. Gear up. Claps. Up. Ooh. Ugly takeoff, but we're up. Let's give her a whirl. Full power. I can already feel she's a lot, a lot slower than the Dora. And I've also got to be careful not to stall her, so if I took too much alpha, woohoohoo! Sips over. And again. Whee! She recovers pretty well though, so let's get some speed up. Listen to that engine. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful. Makes it all worth it. Oopsie. <laughs> So regards, regards flight, although she, she feels a bit slower than the Dora, otherwise she feels exactly the same. As soon as you introduce any alpha, then she just basically stalls. Uh, so you've got to be gentle. As well as that, she's got the same feel as the Dora. 
in what I, what I um, kind of call a mature field. She's very, not slothful, but she's very gentle. She's very controlled. She's not jig jiggity like the uh, Spitfire. If I want to aim at a target, really easy to aim. Almost like there's a stability system in there. There's probably not, but um, it's very stable, very stable. Let's go in for um, a gun run. So nice, big, slow arc. Watch the speed. Fine, let's find something to blow up. Got some Nissan huts down there, that might be good. Off the power. Just look how controlled she is. I'm having to do no work at all. She's doing it all herself. Machine guns. Cannon. Machine gun. Cannon. Get some. Get some. Get some. All that firepower, look at that. Absolutely, if they were blow upable, you would just nail anything. Really good stuff. Climb is uh, pretty shockingly bad, to be honest. But that's just how it is. She's a heavy bird. Just listen to that. Oh, and again. So good. Beautiful. I can forgive her forgive her lack of performance just for that set engine sound. We've got no MW50, we've got about a uh, blast, sorry, I've forgotten how many horsepower, so I'm not gonna try and say, but we found out earlier. Turn, uh, terrible, <laughs> to be honest, same as the Dora, pretty much exactly the same. That's a tiny bit better, it's a tiny bit less wing loaded, but still terrible. See me there, you can see her starting to struggle. You see when the cockpit starts to shake, that's when she's reached her limit, limit of alpha, just can't, look at that. Lose a bit of altitude to be easier. No, it just it just can't turn. And she's down. So you've got to fly. Uh, you got to fly very conservatively, very maturely. No crazy either moves like you can in the Spitfire. Roll. It's pretty good. Um, I'll describe it. Feels the same as the Dora, to be honest. I think it's even got the same wings, more or less. So should feel about the same. It's pretty good. Not perfect, but. Uh, uh, yeah, it's fine. In terms of acceleration, speed, pretty crap to be honest. Uh, it's the same speed as the Spitfire, but it accelerates less fast than the Spitfire. You can just tell. You can just tell. It just doesn't accelerate as fast. The dive is pretty good. And she's solid construction as well, so I haven't managed to rip any wings off like you do in the Spitfire, which is incredibly frustrating. I uh, can't think of anything else to say. So. I guess it's like a mini Dora, it's like a Dora, but it's not as good. I still prefer it to the Dora though. Although she doesn't perform anywhere near as well as the Dora, there's just the sounds. And this is why I go on and on about the sounds in an aircraft and why they're so important and why so many third party module makers uh, get on my nerves. The sound really makes the module. And I would rather fly this than a Dora because the sounds are better. That radial sounds gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And it makes you want to fly it adds more immersion even though it's a shitter plane so uh, that's kind of my proof of concept there right landing basically the same as the door I've, I've never noticed anything different uh, right I'm gonna concentrate this time uh, where's our speed where's our speedo where's our speedo there it is where's the runway there it is we're a little fast we're gonna do some slip if you slip that way Have I just swacked my tail off no I'm good oh, I've lost my rudder there for a minute okay turning fairly tight I'm gonna see if we can get the dudes down now. Ah, I can't do it. Oh my god, I stalled. Look, I literally stalled and recovered. <laughs> That's pretty good, right? Sorry, I'm obviously not prepared for these, but that's kind of the best way I like to do it. Because you, when, you, when you're not prepared for something, you give your honest opinion. Uh, you don't overanalyze it. Uh, so I like to do it right. I've got to concentrate now. We're way too slow, so power on. No, we're okay. Okay. Very easy to stall, so we've just got to be careful. Keep an eye on that speed. Little, she can fly a little bit slower than Adora, but not a great deal. So, relatively fast. Control, mature landing required here. Off the power now, too fast. Double check that everything's down. I believe it is. Right. Let nature do the work now. Uh, trim, sorry, I haven't mentioned. It's elevated trim only, I believe. Again, again, she doesn't need anything. She's so stable. You won't even miss your ailer on trim. Um, got to 
concentrate for just a second. Stick back. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Look how easy that was. I haven't done that for however long. Just shows how easy it is to do in a plane like this. So stable. As long as you don't it's go too slow, you don't drop a. Sorry, I'm not concentrating. Don't drop a wing. Um, it's absolutely fine. Very little you can do wrong. Um, oh, for five minutes, really? What literally when I said that? Unbelievable. Probably best pretend that didn't happen. Uh, speak, that's one thing. Be careful of wheel brakes on this in these uh, warbirds. Obviously, the first thing they do is flip over because of their heavy nose. So you just be very careful, especially in a Spitfire. Look at that model. It's absolutely beautiful. And you can blow the engine cowling away when it gets damaged and see the pistons of the engines and stuff. It's proper sweet. Beautiful external textures. We'll uh, look at the external models a little bit later in the video. Let's give it some beans so you can hear the amazing sounds. Cannon. Get some. Machine gun. Cannon. Oh no, that's out of cannon. That's machine gun and cannon. Interesting. And all together, all six. It's like a Gaway. Or a Vulcan. If you're hit by that, you're really going to know about it. And the beautiful engine. Ready? <laughs> I give up. She is a little nose heavy. So yeah, performance-wise, pretty crap. Um, crapper than everything about the i16 generally, but just beautiful to fly. Beautiful control, beautiful flight model, beautiful sound, and uh, just a real joy, to be honest. As long as you don't want to be the best in a dogfight, uh, she's really hot as shit. Okay, I think we'll move on to the Curvers next. Okay, welcome to the 109K4 cockpit. So where do we start? I think the first thing is, one of the reasons I don't fly this a lot is because I don't like the visibility. They've got these big... Um, oh, look. I'm a Nazi officer, look. Jawohl. Uh, we've got this shield up here that uh, protects the pilot. I believe that's bulletproof glass there. So in the K4, at least we've got the ability to look uh, directly back. But in the previous versions, you've just got solid metal here. Uh, it's really good. It means I can't get pilot sniped from the rear. But also, looking back, every time I seem to fly this plane... Um, the, the target is there and I can never see them when I'm being chased. Let me see if that changes. Yeah, it's not too bad actually. It's a lot better than it is an IL-2 at least. Regards to the cockpit itself, uh, the front is fairly similar. The gauges are fairly similar to the Dora, although they're laid out differently. The rest of the cockpit is amazingly, what's the word, rural. There's no intention of comfort here. Very industrial, your big wheels for your trim. Your trim is uh, elevator or stabilizer only. No rudder, no aileron again. Um, and unfortunately, we don't have the beautiful flight characteristics of the Dora. So it's going to be, again, a very rural flight, a bit like the Spitfire. So it feels being like some, I don't know, workshop machinery rather than actually inside an aeroplane this. But it's perfectly functional. Uh, I guess visuals first. So let me just pan around. Again, the quality is the same as the others. They're all very good. This stuff up here is a pain in the ass, to be honest, in terms of visibility. The cockpits just weren't good enough for the Nazis. Your radio, your IFF, your oxygen. Your fuse board. Flare gun. I can't remember how to use it, so I won't show you, but you can put... Uh, different colour flares in there I think or maybe it's just one colour flare I can't remember no I think you can put different colour flares in and shoot it and I think you can even remove the flare gun if you want uh, we do have MW50 here and we've got our radio uh, guides here our direction finding doesn't work at the moment annoyingly sight uh, even though this is the latest plane I don't think this is a gyroscopic sight from memory correct me if I'm wrong I'm pretty sure it's just a uh, standard reflector sight Very industrial. Okay, regards to flight, I honestly can't remember the last time I flew this, so this is going to be everything I'm just doing, going to do by pure reaction. Now, let's have a look around. We need a tailwheel lock. I think it's that there, isn't it? So that'll be locked. NW50 is this guy here. Uh, Stoff. 
Uh, God, I can't remember my German stuff. That's going to be on, isn't it? MW50 on, automatically on there. MW50 on there. Uh, the guns on there. Where would the safety catch be? Safety catch. There it is. Let's try firing the guns. Well, a uh, two machine guns in the cowling and a thumping great 30 mil cannon in the center of the spinner, which is really interesting. Get some. And the cannon. Woohoo! It's big. It's big. With regards to takeoff, honestly, I have no idea. I can't remember. So I'm going to do it purely by feel. I'm just going to leave the trim neutral and uh, see what happens. If it's a good flight model, which all of these warbirds are, it'll tell me exactly what she needs. Oh, um, one of the f one of the first aircraft in the world, I believe, with leading uh, wing leading edge retractable slats here, there, and there. And these are very early uh, versions of them, purely spring mounted. And one of the um, anecdotal. Uh, stories from World War Two is that if you're in a Spitfire being chased by one of these uh, what you would do is you would kind of yaw over, rudder over um, into a dive and this guy here, would, the 109 would be forced to follow and because of the kind of uneven pressure on these um, these these guys here once they've been retracted sorry, once they've come out, once they're retracting and we've got this big yaw, they would actually jam, um, I've, I've actually tried playing with one in real life, you can see they're so simple how they operate and and then the, this guy would then have a fully jammed left and right slat and they're both begun half in and half out and uh, ruin your airfoil uh, so that's one way you could beat uh, a German I don't know which version it was in probably the early versions but there you go okay, let's just get on with it let's see what she's gonna tell me oh god Jesus woohoo slow that down slow that down sir Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. right Immediately, I can feel that she's pulling massively to the left. We're going to need some wheel brake here for this. So we've got the rear tail wheel locked, I'm pretty sure. Let's try again. So she's got so much yaw that we're going to need to wheel brake until we've got some decent rudder authority. Oh, she's rolling left horrifically. There we go. So I'm doing, I'm doing all kinds of nasty things here that I don't want to have to do. But Okay. Oh, and she just took off on her own. There's loads of lift there. Okay, that was interesting. Not going to lie. Uh, just do my stuff. Put my gear up. Check my lights. Okay. So it took off much more like a Spitfire than a Dora. And it had a huge amount of torque pulling me to the left. I guess that's the powerful engine there. So I overcame that with a wheel brake. I have differential wheel brakes on this aircraft. And then I found out I got rudder authority. And to be honest, as soon as I got rudder authority, she took off. And immediately when she's up here, she feels somewhere between a Spit and a Dora. Possibly more towards a spit. Um, just so much lift I can feel. Very powerful, very high acceleration. Interestingly fast as well. Look down there, 200 knots, and I've not been wet. So um, let's um, get some speed up. Let's try some roll. The roll is actually pretty crap, to be honest. That feels a bit like a Spitfire. I can't see any reason why it should, but it does feel like a Spitfire, pretty slow compared to those Doras. I guess the ailerons just aren't that good. Let's try some high turn. Feels very good, very good. Look at that turn. Just like a Spitfire. Oh, I've got to start flying this more. I've just realised how good it is. And I can turn and climb. Finally giving out at 20 degrees alpha. Even on the edge of the alpha limit, she is really easy. Look, she doesn't really drop a wing. She just uh, gives up and starts turning up. Very easy to fly. Very easy to fly. Try that again. I can see why the boys say it's so good now. Look at that, 20 degrees alpha. Perfectly stable. Beautiful turn rate. So we can see that outside. A little bit dangerous to do that outside. Let's get some vertical. In fact, let's get some pow pow. Just kind of lean over to the side like this, a little bit awkward. Get some. Look at that 20 more cannon. It's got no traitors, I don't think. Look, no, hitting it with the cannon. Ha <laughs> ha! Beautiful. Fast. Look at that, nearly 300 knots. Amazing stuff. Right up. She's not very heavy, so she'll retain her energy pretty well up here. 180 knots, not even threatening to stall. Absolutely beautiful. Really easy to control. Probably more easy than the spit. In terms of 
uh, what's the word, not controllability, in terms of kind of elegance, where the 190 was very elegant and the Spitfire was very jittery and the opposite to elegant. It feels somewhere in between, more towards the Dora, I think. If I want to aim at something, it's a little bit jittery, but nothing like the Spitfire. The gun sight is excellent. I'm going to be able to lead, plenty of lead I'll be able to give there. Get some. Anything that's let down, it, that's let down is the um, is the guns. Really, you got two, one, you got two 13 mils. I think they're 13 mils, and um, the cannon is not really much use for a dogfight, to be honest. And you can see you got no traces, which makes it pretty much useless. Um, and so it means you've only got two machine guns. But I can see why the guys do so well immediately, having not flown this in a long time. It's, it's more controllable than the Spitfire, it's faster than the Spitfire, turns nearly as good as the Spitfire, not quite as good, but nearly as good, much better than the Dora, it's excellent in a dive, it's excellent upwards, it's climb rate is second to none, it's the best climb rate um, out of anything here. The sound, uh, I think it's Mercedes-Benz M12, uh, V12. Good, big chunky sound, it's got a nice flyby. Sounds sort of very bassy. Sounds a bit like the Jumo to me from the uh, from the Dora. See if we can get those uh, leading edge flaps into order. Uh, leading edge slats, sorry. I'm going to try and stall it on purpose. Look, you see them come out there? I'm not sure if it's Alpha or if it's Speeds that, that puts them out. Probably, presumably Alpha. I don't think you can jam them like you can in real life. Stall on purpose, see how she recovers. Down to 60 knots in a stall. Nice and nose heavy. Control comes back immediately. What a lovely plane. What a lovely plane. Really nice. Definitely going to have to start flying this more now I realise how good it is. Uh, trim is stabiliser or elevator only. Uh, again, to be honest, it's so neutral. It's somewhere between the Spitfire and the door in terms of its neutrality. Again, tending towards the door a bit. It's it's going to be a lot easier to fly in formation than the door. I can already tell uh, than the Spitfire. Sorry, the Spitfire needs so much stick input to uh, for its lack of um, for its lack of uh, aileron trim. Um, so it's going to be a lot more comfortable to fly than the Spit. Uh, acceleration, full power, MW50 on. Where's the pressure gauge? Where's the pressure gauge? I can't see it. There it is. Yep, powerful. Really good acceleration, even though we're heading upwards. Right, I guess we're going to think about landing now. And honestly, I have no idea how to land this thing. So I'm just going to uh, rely on what the feedback of the module tells me. And just play it by ear. Um, where's our speedo? Where's our speedo? There it is. So the first thing is, we're going to have to slip off a bunch of speed. So let's go into a slip. Oh, she doesn't like to lose speed. God, that's full, full slip there. Seems to be a restriction on the rudder. It might be might be uh, because of the speed. Okay, we'll just have to turn to get the speed down. Spitfire loses speed much easier. Right, down we go. There we go. Get that speed off. A little better. Okay, I uh, reckon we can get the gear out. Gear coming down. Uh, the flaps. How do I do the flaps? Uh, oh, we'll turn that big wheel up and we'll slowly ease them down. Compare that to the Dora, where you've got a lovely modern kind of digital or analog button. Uh, it's so rural, cultural. Um, all throughout these tests, I've just used full RPM, I should tell you. Uh, right, sorry, I need, do need to concentrate now. I've got to feel that flight model. I think the flaps are still coming down, look. No, nope, they're settled. Right, let's just out, trim it out and um, gear is down, the lights are on. Oh, she feels lovely. She really does feel good. I reckon I can land her about 90 knots, what do you think? Wing loading's not too high, more trim. We'll see, she'll tell me what she wants. I am having to hold a little bit of left here, because obviously no alon trim, so I can feel that a little bit. Really careful on the power here. And when we touch down, I've got to be careful of those wheel brakes. I may need to use those wheel brakes. So there we go. There we go, just feel it now, I'm not going to look at the instruments. What does she want to do? That's what she wants to do. And lovely. Lovely. I'm going to use rudder and a little bit of wheel brake, because I can remember from the land takeoff, she was wheel brake heavy. To be honest, that's the first time I've done that in what, I don't know, years? 
and I think a shaven monkey could do that. It was really easy, really easy to do. Lovely, really happy with that. And it's one of the delights of um, being able to go through and do these module reviews. You get to find out what, how good these old modules were again. Uh, let's listen to some sounds. Machine guns. Get some. Get some. Mighty cannon. Oh. Both together. Out of cannon rounds already. Really good. Just listen to that. Sadies. <laughs> Had to happen. It sounds good. It doesn't sound as good as the A8, but it sounds pretty good. Uh, that's that plane, really. I uh, really enjoyed that. Thoroughly enjoyed that. Let's go and try the Mustang. Okay, it's a long time since I've been in a P51. This must be, uh, I don't know, um, a year and a half, maybe. And I've got nothing really against it. But, you know, there's only so many warbirds you can rem remember how to fly, really. Uh, get rid of that guy. First instincts are... What a canopy. That's the, easily the best canopy out of here. I can already see that I'm going to start having to fly this plane again. Beautiful visibility. Front bow is tiny. Look at that. I don't know if that's bulletproof glass or not. I presume it probably is. Cockpit is a little dark, but perfectly functional. Um, you've got your miles per hour there. Now, you do have to, unlike the German planes, you do have to uh, con um, look after your engine in this. A bit like the Spit, but probably even more. You can easily blow your engine up. Whereas the German planes, they tend to look after themselves. So that's one thing. So we can probably expect an engine fail because I can't remember how to do it, obviously. Um, I'll have a good look around the copper for you. It comes in two variants, the 2.5 and the 3.0. To be honest, I haven't actually found the difference between them. Something to do with the, um, the radio, apparently, but it's tend to be corrected. Visual quality, maybe, nah, yeah, it's just the same as a spit, isn't it? A tiny bit less than the Germans, but generally fine. Uh, one complaint is that the um, oh the what is it the uh, the ADF or the direction finding doesn't work and never has worked in this. I think they should make the effort if you're going to pay you fifty dollars for this. The fuel gauges are a massive pain in the butt to use. You see one down there. You see one down. I can't even see that one down there. There's one in there. There's also one behind your headrest somewhere. I can't see it. So it's, it's, that's a pain in the butt. And you have to change your various fuel tanks manually uh, with that guy there. <laughs> so you've got to know what you're doing because you can uh, easily get your fuel wrong like that. Gun sight, haven't used it in a long time, doesn't appear to be gyro driven, not that I can see. Got a wingspan selector there, can get it moving, can't get it moving, there we go. 40 meters, uh, sorry feet, uh, can't get it moving there for some reason but it, I'm sure it does work. And you're, there's going to be a manual ranger there presumably and uh, that's that. Uh, let's see if we can find some lights, 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 there he is, pew, there we go, oh, that's more like it, isn't it, lovely lighting, uh, so we can arm the guns, we've got six times M3s, no M2s, uh, let's move that there up, uh, pretty cool little air to air and air to ground sight there, pow pow, pow pow, that sounds pretty cool, right, compare that to the stupid M61 sound in the Tomcat or something. Oof, really nice. In terms of trim, very advanced. We've got aileron trim, we've got elevator trim, and we've got rudder trim. So flying this thing is just, oh, it's just beautiful, beautiful. And as, on top of that, it's pretty stable as well, to be honest. Oh, I've just seen the sight is gyro or fixed. Right, so you can have a gyro, gyro and fixed or fixed. So it is a gyro based sight, that's interesting. Uh, I guess I'm gonna turn it on there or there. We'll just stick with fixed. Generally, gyro sites, we find them use useless for dogfighting. They're only usually good for bombers and whatnot. Reticle is up nice and high, so we can get plenty of lead on the target. That's pretty awesome. All in all, I'm just starting to love it again, just like the BF-109. Uh, it's really cool doing this video. Okay, for takeoff, I expect it to be very easy. I'll just use neutral trim. I'll just do whatever you know I feel through the module that I need to do to counteract it, and you'll see that in my movements. So let's get on with it. Let's see what, how she sounds. You're into the left. Oh, plenty of rudder authority already. That's amazing. It's because of the uh, backwash of the rotor. I want a bit of right roll here to counteract the, uh, the prop. Feels very powerful. Bit of forward stick now. I want to see that nose come down. 
Now full power, let's get the speed up. That's feel very powerful. 150, and up we go. Wow, that was amazingly easy. Amazingly easy. Gear up. After driving the Spitfire and whatnot, it just makes everything else so easy. <laughs> so, I've forgotten what it's like to fly this thing. Speed, um, wasn't even long left, and we're already on our way to 200, so the speed's pretty good. Just got to keep an eye on my temperatures and my pressures here, because I can easily kill this engine. Uh, you have to learn how to look after it, basically. Let's see how she feels. Let's try roll first of all, shall we? Just going to sort my trim out. To be honest, even without trim, she's pretty neutral uh, in roll. Oh dear, that's pretty bad roll. She's got the biggest, I think, wingspan here, so it makes sense. That's, uh, that's, that's Spitfire terrible, that is. I'm sure if you can barely hear me, it's just a very loud engine. So, um, yeah, roll feels somewhere between the Spitfire and probably the BF109, I think. The mirror does work, we've got it turned off. Oh god, I've just pressed the M button and cut the engine. Why would I do that? Can I start it up again? Yes! Must have been the fuel cut button. Uh, let's just check out turn. I'm just going to go wet for this. It's better than the Dora, you know, and I haven't even got my flaps down. Uh, what a lot of people say is put your flaps down in this for manoeuvring, so I'm going to put them down a little bit. Uh, how do I put them down? Whoops, I think I just put my gear down. A bit of a noob. Uh, put those flaps down just a bit. Get some more airfoil there. Check the gears in. Let's try turning again. You know what? That's that's better than a Dora. That's a lot better than a Dora. You see, I'm starting to give up at that point. Let's see what kind of altitude she can handle. Handle about 13 degrees of alpha, much less than a BF 109. So she's more towards the Dora than a BF 109 or a Spiff. You know what? She's fine. She gets out and spin pretty well. So she's somewhere between a 109 and a Dora in terms of turn, vertical. Decent amount of power there, but she is heavy. Look how much speed we've burnt off compared to the door. Uh, sorry, compared to the 109. Uh oh, oh, this could end bad. Oh, I've generally lost control. No, I've got it back. Nice and nose heavy. Careful in a dive. Don't rush it. Don't rush it. There we go. Easy. Yeah, so it's got a lot heavier with the same kind of power as the um, 109. In terms of how she feels, actually really nice, well balanced, a bit like the Dora. Uh, I can see it being very easy to aim at things here. Lovely clear reflector sight makes a massive difference. She gets buffeted around with the cannons firing, but to be honest, that's the same with all of them. Uh, let's go and blow something up. What should I blow up? Uh, Yes, Look at that. Look at that. Really impressive stuff. Cool. Really easy to aim. Much easier than the spit. More towards the Dora in terms of her, you know, how controlled, how composed she is. So, pretty good. Really happy with it. Again, I just love Warbirds. They're just such good models in DCF. Um... Yeah, honestly, really, really easy to fly. Really easy to fly. I guess the next thing is we want to go for a landing. Again, no idea how to do it. She will tell me when she's happy. Let me, where's my speedo? There it is. Uh, speed's good already for gear out. So gear going down. I'll start bringing those flaps down. Whoops, I didn't realise the flaps were so far down. I was, uh, I've been affecting my speed quite a lot, I imagine. Those flaps all the way down for landing. Check speed. Speed's good. Landing speed, I'm going to guess about 120 knot, uh, 120 miles per hour, maybe 110, just by the wing loading. Okay, as ever, we'll do it by feel. 
Check the landing gear out. They are. Going for a Spitfire type landing. Everything else about this plane is just easy, so I get a feeling the landing. This is probably the best one to start with by the feel of it. Um, very hard to get anything wrong, apart from engine maintenance. I think it's very difficult to get anything wrong with this aircraft. Speed, what's the speed? 150, yeah, it's just fine. I'm gonna start setting my trim up now. Got left aileron, plenty of up. Uh, plenty of stabilizer up. More left. Oops, missed the runway. A good neutral feel. She feels perfectly happy. No chance of dropping a wing. I'm gonna add just a little bit of power just in case, because I'm just not familiar with this aircraft. Too much power. Loving that backfire kind of sound. Right, and we're gonna do exactly the same trick we do with all our planes. We'll just hover above the ground and she'll land when she's ready to land. We'll land with a three-pointer. Always land a Wolvo with a three-pointer. Yes, you can land from two-point, but it's a risky business unless you really know what you're doing. With a three-pointer, you can let the bird land itself when it's happy to land. Look at that. Oh, that's so easy. That was so easy. On the ground, very controllable. There's no excuse to do anything wrong. It's so simple down here. You have so much rudder authority. Really good stuff. Okay. I'm going to try to trick her. Let me remember how to do it. No, I can't. Damn. <laughs> Never mind. Right. Got to be careful not to um, shove the nose over. Let's do some, play some silly bugger, shall we? Whee! Okay, let's try some sounds. Oh, listen to that reverb. Beautiful. Really good stuff. Listen to that engine. I'm not sure if it's the Allison or the Merlin in this, so you guys have to remind me. Unbelievably stable on the ground. Compare that to a Spitfire or something. Really stable. Awesome. Yep, all in all, uh, brilliant. Brilliant. Not a single complaint about that. That's really, really good. Uh, let's go and try the last plane. Hey, welcome to the Polycarb of I-16 Ishak, the donkey. Um, aptly named because of how crazy it looks. Just see if I can there we go. Got a lovely Rio stat there. Uh, I am a fan. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, in terms of effectiveness, it's uh, you know it's nothing compared to the other. It's useless compared to the other birds, but it's you know it's historically accurate. I'm gonna look around, do the visuals first. Obviously, you know it's just how it is. You have to kind of look under this bulkhead. It's a bit of a pain in the butt, but. Big old ailerons, we should have some decent roll authority on this thing. Look how small it is, look at weather. Amazing. Right, sorry, concentrate. You want to look around the cockpit without me chucking my head around, don't you? Interesting seat. Well, you couldn't ask much more for visibility. We've got no cockpit. No canopy, sorry. Big old reflector sight. Good, I like that. Uh, we've got uh, four machine guns here. Shooting through the prop. Mm, not much else to say, really. It is an unstable aircraft. It is almost certainly going to be... I can't really remember, but it's almost certainly going to be harder to fly than the other five, simply because the shape of it. It's 20 feet long at the end of the day. Aeroplanes don't like being short, just like cars. Anything vehicle, you make sure it will be inherently unstable in the yaw. That's just how it is. And in terms of trim, this is the only aircraft that has no trim at all. We can't trim the uh, ailerons. We can't trim the horizontal stabilizers. We can't trim the vertical stabilizer, the rudder. Um, so everything is flown by hand, and it's awkward. But that's you know, it's it's how it is. All right, so let's just give it a go and hope for the best. I really can't remember what to expect, but again, as long as the flight model's good, it'll tell me everything I need to know, and you'll be able to see me react to it. So hopefully not too much yaw. 
We shall see. Oh, that sounds cool, right? Big old radial. That sounds cool. Just going to the right. Oh, oscillation. Oh, hello. This is not normal. Got myself in a tank slapper here. Right roll. It rolls the opposite way to the other aircraft. Jeez. I'm not going to lie, that was actually pretty difficult. The main problem that got me, and sorry if you can't hear me, but it's going to be loud, is that um, it's opposite to all the other aircraft. It slings you left rather than slinging you right, and it rolls you left rather than rolling you right. So I'm, I'm so used to uh, going the other way that it, 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 you know, it took me. Uh, but uh, again, she gave me all the feedback she needed. Also, because of the yaw instability, because she's so short, um, you know, that's why I was waggling left and right because um, she's just inherently unstable like that. Right, um, uh, flaps are up, gear. Ah, oh, now this is always an interesting thing. Um, can't be too hard to figure out, can it? We've got a gear handle. We've got a gear direction, so that will go up. What's that? Come on, tell me where you are. It's a gear lock, so that'll go off. It's a spring tensioner. Oh my God! Probably best pretend that didn't happen. Uh, let's try and get up again. Right, I've learned from my previous errors, so... Oh, careful, careful, careful. Uh, much better this time, look at that. Oh, look at that. Woo. There we go, that's how you do it. Right, uh, sorry, I completely forgot how to do this. So that that it's going to be why won't that gear go up there we go we got it we got it in the end oh, sorry about that but um, it's a difficult thing to do putting the gear up in this it's still going up Gear is still going up. You see the gear indicator along this uh, this snake-like thing along the left and the right. Putting the gear up is probably the hardest thing to do in the ice shack. There is a cheating way of doing it, but we like to do it realistic. You see all the the things moving. Look, pretty cool, right? Jesus, how long does it take? That's it, the gear's up. Uh, that was difficult. Right, I can finally fire the aircraft. We're on, let's go. Let's rock. That sound is gorgeous. Listen to that sound. It's so slow. Look at the speed on the, on the left, it's so slow. Let's try some rolls. Actually, really good. I mean, not amazing, but that's a pretty good roll. Compare it to the 109, compare it to the Spit, compare it to the P-51. It's a good change in direction, that is. Let's try the turn. I expect it to be pretty good. Yeah, amazing. Look at that turn. Look at that turn. Really impressive. So if you've got a 1 on 9 on your 6 or a door on your 6, you can just turn like this. She'll go up to about 15 degrees angle of attack before she stalls the wing. So, good turn. Good roll. Climb is terrible. It's going to be the worst here. No doubt about it. But she is very light and agile. So we can do some silliness, shall we? Watch this. Ha ha ha! Woohoo! Alright. Almost like a Christian Eagle with guns. Get some. Very forgiving. Very forgiving. You couldn't do that in a Dora. You simply did that in a Dora or a Mustang, you would stall. Simple as that. 
very forgiving in the Alpha. Very nippy. That's a great plane. It's just a great plane. Jerky, like the Spitfire. Very jerky and um, very alive. Uh, so it's a little bit difficult to aim. You don't have this, not as steady as the Dora or the Mustang or the 109. Look at that. She just won't stall. She's so light. So good wing loading. She just won't stall. It's like flying a powerful jet. Be careful here. I'm not sure what she's like in a dive. Log warbirds are very dangerous to dive in compared to jets. She seems fine. Perfectly neutral everything. If only she had speed. Only she had speed. This would be the best warbird. But that's how it is, you know. You want speed. You've got to make it big. You've got to make it heavy. It's going to lose maneuverability. Simple as that. I feel like I could thread it. I feel like I could thread it through these buildings really easily. Got to be careful about your instability. Look. Look at that, it's majestic. Absolutely wonderful. A little bit jerky. It's just like a mini Spitfire. She's like a mini Spitfire, but more actual, more fun than the Spit. This is definitely the most fun warbird. There's no doubt about it. In terms of just flight. Amazing flight, really good. Done roll, done climb, done turn, done guns, done sound. That's it. I'm going to land, but I'm not putting my gear out because I haven't got all, all day to put my gear out. I'm just going to go for a belly landing, I think. So easy to fly that I think you could um, probably belly land it. So it's very easy to fly, but just be careful of um, your stability on takeoff. Very unstable, not easy to do. Probably going to be the same on the landing. Shame the armament's so crap, but it is what it is. Really good play. Definitely the most fun to fly. Do that all day. Okay, where's the speedo? Um, I have no idea. There it is. I could probably land it about 50 knots. Let's see how slow we can get it out of here. It's out of injury. It's got no trim, so it's all going to be in the stick. I'm a rudder and stick man anyway, so... Oh, flaps. Who's a silly cow? Oh, I can't remember how to do the flaps. You know what? I don't need it. Let's just get the bird down. Sparky. Oh, what a great way to end. And I'm so glad we uh, ended on the pull a car off. It's just a joy. Joy to fly. Bloody useless, but absolute joy. Right, that's all the planes done. Sorry that took so long, but there's a lot to get in here. Let's go and look at some external visuals. Okay, we've got the birds all here together. We're just going to have a close look at the external meshes and the textures now. Uh, they're all pretty top-notch, to be honest. I mean, they break up a little when you get close to them, like all of the planes, but... At the end of the day, it's how convincing are they? I find them very convincing. All the kind of um, scratch paint and stuff like that is pretty cool, right?
Got the clip wing variant here. Okay, so we have to draw a conclusion at the end, and the conclusion we draw is exactly what we said in the beginning, that they're all as good as one another. They've all got the same quality of graphics, the same quality of sound, the same quality of flight model. So let's do the rating. So for the Warbirds, for the visuals, we're going to do 4 out of 5. They're very good all round. They're not really up there with the Tomcat and the FA team, really, maybe, but really good, happy with them. Sound, really good all the way round. Uh, excellent engine noises for all of them, excellent gunnery noises for all of them, in cockpit sounds and uh, ground rumbling and whatnot, really, really top. Maybe a little complaint, I'd like a little more wind noise in there when we're getting up to gonna, 300 plus miles an hour, I'd like to, a bit more wind noise to tell me that I'm doing that speed. Other than that, I can't really fault them, to be honest. So four out of five for sounds. Interactivity. Uh, all of them have about the same level, each of them is missing a little bit here and there, a couple of knobs here and there, mainly stuff that's not relevant to DCS. Uh, they're all 95 to 98% complete and everything feels and works well, so I'm going to say interactivity in detail, 4 out of 5 as well. In terms of flight models, absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm going to give them all 4.5 out of 5. And it's really easy to tell how good these are. If you go and play IL-2, I don't want to slag IL-2 off, I find it fun. It's a good thing, I suggest you do go and uh, use IL-2. But if you use IL-2 and you go fly your BF-109, you go fly your Yak, you go fly whatever, and feel the flight models, and, and then come back to DTS and fly the same plane, it is night and day, the quality of the flight engine. And uh, it can't be quantified, I can't tell you in any kind of numbers or bar charts or graph how that is. You just know, as an experienced virtual pilot, how amazing these flight models are compared to something like IL-2. And I would suggest that IL-2 is more kind of towards the norm that most uh, kind of games are, if you like. And these flight models here are right at the top. They're as good as you can get. Go and try it yourself, and 100% uh, you would agree with me. It doesn't mean they're easy. These are much harder, 10 times harder to fly any of these than an IL-2 uh, an IL-2 plane, but, you know, that's how it is. In terms of difficulty, it's a, it's a tough one to do, that is... Um, so uh, p 51s clearly the easiest one here. I'd say that's three out of five because although it's the easiest, a warbird is not easy to use. You know, it's you're going to know a lot about flying to fly these things. It's not like jumping in a F-18 or something. 
And the most difficult one must be the Polakarvov with its terrible your statistics, uh, which is going to be a 4 out of 5. So I'll say average for Warbirds, difficulty a 3.5 out of 5. Which leads me to the summary. So Warbirds, if you haven't got one, what's wrong with you? Uh, you I don't consider you watching a proper virtual pilot or at least a DCS pilot unless you've got a Warbird. You'll learn more in about flight in an hour of good Warbird flying than you will learn in 10 months in the bloody Hornet or the F-16 or the F-14. Once you've got one or two of these then I'll take you seriously as a top pilot. Difficult but incredibly rewarding compared to anything else in DCS. So that's it. I hope I've done my job, which is to show you the kind of the differences, what you get when you buy that compared to when you buy that compared to when you buy that. I insist that you go and buy them all because they're all just amazing, to be honest, and come and fly some awesome warbird missions with us. Take care. See you later.